what up what up so in today's video i'm going to be talking about global warming since it snowed the last couple days and it's beautiful out here i thought it would be the perfect opportunity to talk about um, our cow burps and cow farts really the leading cause of global warming now just logically thinking about this it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me that that cow burps would be the leading cause of global warming. So I started to take a, uh, you know, like a deeper look into this topic, reading some studies, really getting a little bit deeper into it than just watching Cowspiracy or, you know, yeah, I guess Cowspiracy would probably be the, the, the main one that I used to parrot, which is no longer backed by its uh, main investor, which I found to be kind of funny. Uh, a lot of people pretty much debunk Cowspiracy to the point where the leading investor, I believe his name is Leonardo DiCaprio, is no longer backing or supporting the film anymore. So I found this to be kind of interesting. But anywho, so what I found was pretty much the studies that link global warming to cow burps and cow farts. Because I say cow burps because it's actually shown that like the vast majority of the methane in the CO2 produced is by the, the burps, not the farts. So I kind of find that funny. But these studies are pretty much speculative and associative. They don't really show any direct driving mechanisms and they tend to leave out a lot of key information. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go through some slides. So if you're interested in an alternative perspective on global warming, stay tuned we're also going to talk about regenerative grazing so cell grazing multi paddock grazing and how animals can actually be extremely beneficial to reducing the amount of global gases and the damaged soil and damaged ecosystems so guys, if you are interested in the connection between cow burps and cow farts and global warming, stay tuned for this video, check out the slides, and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about regenerative grazing uh, by using animals to help regenerate the soil and regenerate the ecosystem. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. All right, guys, before we jump into these slides, I quickly wanna say there like in no way, shape or form do I support commercialized factory farming. I personally do my best to support local for local farms that are, uh, you know, raising their animals in a as natural environment as possible. You know, I purchase uh, beef that's um, considered to be raised in the wild. It's called wild like Highland cattle. So uh, what this is, what my point in this video is to do is to uh, show alternative information to the information that Steinfield presented in 2006 saying that the lead cause of global warming was from cattle or livestock burps and farts. I don't really believe this to be true. It just doesn't really make much sense to me. Uh, so I'm just going to present some information uh, on this topic, some, uh, some counter information to what Steinfeld presented. You know, when I was on like a fully plant-based diet, I totally did not take into consideration how much environmental damage I was really doing by, you know, purchasing bananas that were coming from Ecuador and rice that was coming from, uh, you know, Asia and basically importing so many different foods that were causing so much environmental damage. And not only are these, um, you know, fuels used in transporting the foods damaging, but also the practices and the way that they grow these foods are super damaging, uh, you know, in both the destruction of uh, the environment, the soil, and the killing of animals. So here's a counter study done to Steinfeld. So between 1990 and 2007, the global cattle and buffalo population rose by 125 million or 9% while the growth rate of atmospheric methane fell to zero. This is quite different than Steinfeld's information that he proposed as it rose, he said it rose between 35 to 40%. You know, alternative information is showing that this increase could be explained by fossil fuel consumption rather than the burps and farts of cattle. This website has a lot of good information that I got this paragraph from. So if you're interested, please check it out. Once again, it just says, uh, you know, between 1990 and 2005, the cattle population rose by more than 100 million. And during this time, atmospheric methane concentration stabilized completely. And that 
they're really finding out that a lot of the methane emissions are coming from the fossil fuel industry and nature itself. You know, there has been an increase in methane emissions, although the atmospheric methane concentration has stabilized. This is just a little information on CO2 and methane. So methane has a relatively short uh, atmospheric lifetime of, you know, roughly 8.7 years, give or take 1.3 years. So uh, it, it breaks down and dissipates over a matter of time. And then this also talks about how uh, a lot of these studies that talk about global warming being due to livestock don't take into consideration uh, the uh, the breakdown. So they're interpreting it as like 100%. So they're just adding it all together over time and not taking the, the breakdown into consideration and nor are they taking in the baseline into consideration. So what this means is the amount of methane or CO2 that would just be produced in nature without any raising of livestock. So even without uh, livestock, there's always going to be a baseline of methane in the atmosphere. And a lot of the time, this isn't taken into consideration. Just to reiterate, the idea is that with the increase in livestock, there's an increase in CO2, methane, atmospheric concentration, which is the leading cause of global warming. So this is just a snippet. This is the conclusion of another study that says the contribution of domestic livestock in animal grazing to climate change has been claimed in published reports. So there's associations, uh, but it has never actually been proved and that appropriate management practices can assure full compatibility of grazing systems with the environment meaning that we can actually work with animals to regenerate the soil and regenerate the ecosystems and not destroy it. So I don't ever really hear about the benefit of an increase in CO2 emissions. So, uh, you know, over the past 30 years, the amount of uh, worldwide vegetation cover has actually increased quite a bit. This has been shown uh, from multiple satellites uh, that the there's a significant increase in the leaf area index on most of the Earth's vegetative surface. Keep in mind, guys, plants use CO2 for food and uh, as a source of life, just as we use oxygen. So now I want to get more into the regenerative practices of uh, cell grazing. So, you know, like where do cows fit in? Well, if managed appropriately, cattle can actually be used to help build the soil. And this is done through cell grazing or multi paddock grazing, where the, the livestock comes in, it nibbles the plants just enough to stimulate the plant and root growth. And they also stomp on the ground to break it up enough for water to seep deeper. And then they're also defecating and urinating, which becomes organic matter, which is like, uh, which is going to help build the soil. There's like tons of beneficial bacteria. And then this is going to result in the growth of new, you know, new plants and more vigorous growth as well. And it also really helps to minimize runoff and erosion uh, because the water is, uh, penetrating deeper into the earth. So it's kind of like the, the cattle kind of turn the, the soil into a sponge to really help enhance the uptake of water. All right, so many farms that raise cattle use regenerative multi paddock grazing successfully. So they'll just keep the livestock in a cell for a short period of time and then rotate them. So the land actually has enough time to regenerate and recover after the cattle have come in and stimulated the plant growth, broken up the ground, defecated, urinated, creating the organic matter. And by not keeping them for too long a period of time, this really helps to stimulate the growth. And so it can be uh, used to it regenerate the soil in a very sustainable and effective manner. This is a particularly interesting slide. And once again, guys, I've got the links down below. So check out this website in a light continuous grazing. This actually shows that uh, cattle can support the ecosystem to help produce oxygen and reduce the amount of CO2 because the amount of you know gases produced by the cattle themselves are then uptaken by the plants and then the plants in return produce oxygen. So look at the difference between emit, emitted and uh, sequestered. Just so we're all on the same page as to what carbon sequestration is, I've got a definition up here on the screen. So 
<clears throat> it's basically the, the capturing of CO2 emissions. So carbon sequestration describes long-term storage of carbon dioxide or other forms of carbon to either mitigate or defer global warming and avoid dangerous climate change. So as you just saw, uh, this multi-cell grazing can actually be used to reverse this so-called quote-unquote climate change due to uh, the raising of livestock. And the last slide just shows the difference between multi paddock grazing and no grazing. Um, you know, with the multi paddock grazing, there tends to be a greater diversity of plants and for it to be uh, there to be more uh, vigorous growth with the plants as well. All right, guys, that concludes the slides. You know, if you found this interesting, check out the links below. Uh, you'll find all the information that I presented in the slides. Uh, I found this to be pretty interesting once I started to investigate this topic. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, there's counter information. Not everyone's going to agree, but uh, I found it pretty interesting. And so if you guys have any comments or questions, post them down below. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. And until next time, guys.